Welcome, everybody. This is a candid conversation between myself, Martina Flor, the host of the show, and Elias Prado, our senior designer in the studio. I run a lettering and custom typography studio here in Berlin, and Elias has been working with me for some years now. And these are conversations where we'll be talking or we'll be touching on different points and topics that have to do with running a creative studio and working together as a team. So what are we going to talk about today, Elias? Yes. Uh, hi, it's nice to be here again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was uh, thinking that, I mean, this the studio has a lot of income streams. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of different things in the studio. The podcast being actually one of them, only mm -hmm. one of them. We do online teaching, we do client work, we... we we have or we used to have like a, a, an online shop as well um you have your books that also like bringing uh, some sort of income to the to the to the studio and i'm like it comes to my head like the question of how the studio has been navigating mm. in between these uh, income streams or this like type of work right and and what actually drives the studio to focus more on one of them or then later after some years into some other ones um just like to kick off with with a specific example like uh i know that martina flor goods the online shop that we had uh, some years back that has been like working for for many years actually mm. um at some point it was it, it was it was closed mm. basically and uh and we started to focus on other things uh, mm. so we had to sort of like invest the time in some other income streams mm. and i'm wondering like yeah what is Actually, the biggest question that I have with this topic is actually like, what, what makes that decision? Yeah. Is it like, is it a decision that you make as a, as a, as a founder, as a CEO, or is it a decision that, that money makes and uh, you listen to that, like, okay, this is not working, this is not profitable. So we start like uh, putting more attention to things that bring actually the income that we, that we, that we need in the studio. Mm. Or is, if it's more like a, a vision thing, like, okay, this doesn't align with our vision anymore. So we start to mm. like focus on other <clears throat> things. Um, I'll throw that question to your side and nice your time to talk now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the criteria to decide whether we focus on one or other income stream has shifted throughout the years mm -hmm. and also throughout um, my personal development as a CEO and business owner. Uh, so the, the way I made decisions in the past are not the same way and, and are not based on the same things that are I made decisions today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just to give a little bit of context to those listening and watching, uh, so in the we we run essentially a lettering and custom typography studio we work for clients so we do client assignments and commissions we create logotypes and artwork for for clients but we also do a lot of work or since the beginning of the of the studio like this since the beginning of this project we have been also teaching and coaching um students in lettering and in business mm -hmm or in creative in developing their creative businesses and we have also started a lot of different projects throughout the 11 years 12 years that we've been running um so we have created books and um and products we have created a product line uh and an online shop what else we have created funds and uh, not only for clients but also for ourselves so we we have created this as digital products that we sell. Uh, we have created online classes on mm -hmm. different platforms. Now we have our own, we run our own um, academy. Um, and yes, and in the very beginning, and I always, I often speak about the importance of income streams for designers because it has had a a big impact on my own career as a designer and artist. Uh, so from the very beginning of my career, I was um, kind of diverse, diversifying my 
income. So I was not only doing client work, but also doing running my own workshops and starting my own projects. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was positive in terms of me not having a more entrepreneurial approach to mm -hmm. the practice and not depending on clients to do most of my income. So I think that was positive in that sense. And it's something that I always encourage other designers and creatives to do because it is also a way of discovering, you know, where, where, where you can shine, mm -hmm. you know, where, where are the things that you can do that are really, you're really good at, mm -hmm. uh, which is not necessarily client work. Yeah. And also at the same time, you don't depend on client work. You know, there's no, um, yeah, I think that many, many freelancers just um, change the, the kind of like the, yeah, change from being employed uh, on a certain job to uh, to have a freelance business business and they change their boss for their clients, you mm -hmm. know, like they change this image of a boss for the image of a client. And if the client is goes away, they're just left out of the job, you know, yeah. so I always wanted to have a different approach to that. And I think developing income streams what was great in that sense that mm -hmm. I didn't depend on client work. But yeah, with the time, I, you know, I'm a very curious person. I like to create stuff. And if I have an idea, I like to realize it. And throughout time, I also realized that I had built a fair amount of income streams yeah. or that my income was built on several income streams and that I was kind of administrating all of these income streams. Yeah. And um, and I was just doing them because it was like, okay, this is, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. So yeah. this is what I'm saying, why I'm, I was saying in the beginning that in the past I had a different way of deciding in which things I will focus. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the past I was just not deciding in what I will focus mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. I was just doing it because like sort of like in, in not following any system or uh, exactly like, uh, everything at, at once. And uh... in the past, it was just accumulative. Okay. So it was like, OK, I do this and now I started this new thing. So I need to keep on running the previous one yeah. and this one. And then I started this other, another thing that yeah. I'm interested in. And then I had like a pile of things that I was taking care yeah. of and yeah, I had some some <laughs> moments in my life where I said like, hey, I, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, but I thought I still thought that it was part of like running a business, yeah. that this was, you know, this was part of being an entrepreneur and part of running your own business, which I, you know, I totally changed my mind yeah. in the, those terms. Like I think that uh, nowadays I have a totally different approach and I think the way of deciding on on in which projects to focus on mm -hmm. started when I started building a team mm -hmm. because it wasn't only, you know, I had to keep things running, not only for myself, yes. but also to be able to pay wages and <laughs> to uh, support the people who were working with me. Yeah. and. And then I started to, I had to start making more informed decisions, mm -hmm. decisions that were not informed by, okay, so this is what I'm supposed to do or by, Hey, this is just fun. Even if it doesn't bring money in. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and, and it wasn't until, um, the Corona pandemic mm -hmm. that I really sat down and looked at all the things that we were doing mm -hmm. and really analyze like what what were the things that made sense mm -hmm. financially but also in terms of like joy yeah. and in terms of like demand mm -hmm. and i started like selecting yeah. okay we focus on this now mm -hmm. and we we try this now and this is working. Let's double down on yes. that, you know, and That's I That's really interesting. Sorry, like uh, that, yeah. that you have some sort of, I mean, at, th at that point where you had to kind of decide or to choose which uh, income streams to put more attention to, um, 
you already kind of had like this huge hat catalog of things that mm. bring mind to the studio, right? Mm. Like, in, and you could like just the fact that you could sit down and analyze uh, like properly what works better than uh, financially or uh, however you want to say it um, talks a lot about like what you the, the work that you did uh, until then, like mm. to like going through different income streams and just have them together to, to be able to compare uh, them, right? Like, mm. uh, um, I think that was sort of a, a, a necessary thing to, to do, like sort of like expanding so much and, and so you could like sit down at some point and try to decide which one to put more attention to, right? And that brings me to the question, like, um, because now, like, like nowadays you can like start discarding some income streams that don't work so well or, or don't align with the vision of the studio or don't work like financially so well mm. um but you already have like a lot of them together mm. but when you were when you were starting mm. um you were just like like you said like you were like doing all these things at once um and i'm wondering if you if you if you went back the, to that time where mm. you were still like expanding these income streams or you like start starting like to to experiment with them um with the knowledge that you have now, the mm. experience that you have now, would you like, would you have done things like differently in a mm. different way? Um, I mean, yes, yes, probably. If mm -hmm. I would have had, if I would have had all the information and training that yeah. I have now, I would have had, I would have done a lot of things differently. Yeah. But I don't regret the way I did things. I think Absolutely. that. Um, I think that I did what I could with the information that I had yes. and the preparation that I had. And I'm glad still that I, that I, as you said, that I built all those income streams mm -hmm. and I, I can totally understand why I was working the way I was working mm -hmm. back then. You know, I, I had other priorities. I had other focus, mm -hmm. um, in, in, my life and career mm -hmm. i had other responsibilities um and i had other resources mm -hmm. around me so it was just me uh, i didn't have to support other people with my work it was just supporting myself mm -hmm. i didn't have a family yet so it was all about like developing my own creative voice mm -hmm. and i was really light in that sense mm -hmm. i was really you know, let's try this and that. And I really, you know, I have this space to experiment with what I could do and with my skills and mm -hmm. um, and also develop my skills, which I think was a wise decision because yes. it's like the skills and the output that I had as a creative is what brought us now as a studio mm -hmm. to the position where we are right now, where yeah. we can do a lot of different things and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to prove that we do great work, you know, like, I think that, um, yeah, it, it just, it was just really positive and it's something that I also work and you know that I think that we in, 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 we do this work with our students that mm -hmm. we, we invite them to focus first on developing a skill yeah. and to really nurture their observation mm -hmm. and nurture the work the work they do and to build that confidence through doing great work yeah. and i think this is what i did in the very beginning that i build my confidence mm -hmm. and i develop my skills um but that was enabled by the fact that i was really light yes you know that yes. i didn't have many responsibilities and stuff and nowadays I am really thankful as well as well that I have all these responsibilities because it makes me do really straightforward decisions. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is taking too much time. It's not bringing money in. Yeah. Out. Out. <laughs> you know, and it's very easy to decide that. Yeah. And even, even so, even when I say this right now, there's things that we do mm -hmm. that are still an investment. Yeah. And what well, this podcast, this podcast will be one of them. Yeah. 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 And it's like, it's something I think that develops in an area that we haven't developed yet, mm -hmm. that I'm interested in developing mm -hmm. and that I feel makes a difference for our students, for the people we want to imp have an impact on. Mm -hmm. But I know that it's still not profitable, mm -hmm. you know? It may be down the road, like mm -hmm. many of the income streams that we, that started as a, 
create a project yeah. and didn't, you know, lead, led to something that now brings an income in the studio. Yeah. But um, yeah. That touches on something that uh, actually we discussed in the previous mm -hmm. coffee break, like uh, at the uh, importance of establishing a system. Mm. Uh, and I believe, like, especially like I noticed this a lot with the with the production of the podcast. Like, if you don't know, like I I produced the podcast uh, with Martina, uh, so I know a lot of the things that happen uh, like behind the cameras. And we have a system for pretty much everything. Mm. But with this podcast, I have noticed it so much. Like we we measure. Uh, like in detail the time that we invest into this project mm, mm. maybe because it's like still not like a, the most profit profitable uh, project of the studio mm. um, and I guess that's also like a place a huge part on the income streams right like uh, uh, like giving each income stream the uh, the time and attention that it that it sort of uh, needs to grow mm. but also to like to not become a, a an issue or a problem in terms of like financial uh, retribution Totally, yeah. and I, if it would, I would not hesitate in like yeah. eliminating that. Yeah, you yeah. know, for me, what we have or the project we have and supporting my team is more important than just doing something for fun. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. If this podcast or whatever project we do for fun mm -hmm. would be detrimental to allowing the the studio to continue running mm -hmm. i would not hesitate yeah. to leave it out you know even if it makes me extremely happy <laughs> um and that's fine i i'm happy that i can do those decisions that uh -huh. that i don't suffer for making those decisions mm -hmm. now i feel that you know you touch on systems and in the previous conversation we also touch on systems and mm -hmm. i feel that also with the time i developed the system or i learn systems to decide which income streams mm -hmm. would stay or we will focus next you yes. know like i think that and i remember this very well um in the beginning of the covid pandemic yeah. i was reading books um i was reading books about simplifying uh so one of them is essentialism um i'm gonna put the this the book Uh, in the show notes, the show notes. Um, Essentialism by the author, I'm gonna tell you next, <laughs> I was reading Essentialism, which is a book about like um, simplifying things and focusing on what, what is important. And also like the idea that, you know, questioning the idea of like, you cannot have many priorities. It is, you know, it, it, having a priority is about having one important thing Uh, and not having like 10 priorities, but because then they are not priorities, <laughs> not, you know, like, anymore, yeah, um, so, um, so I was reading that book. I also read a book that was really, um, that really changed the way I see things that is called 8020. I'm gonna also add it to the show notes. I'm horrible at remembering <laughs> the name of the authors because I, I just read so many books that it's like, I forget about the names. Um, so this book about, Um, called 8020 is a book that poses the 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 principle of the fact that in most businesses 20% of the efforts bring 80% of the income so as I read this book I went on to my income streams uh, sheet that I keep a sheet with every income stream and kind of uh, I have um, I can um, I can understand how much every income stream is bringing in. And as I looked at that income stream, uh, at that income stream sheet after reading that book, I could immediately realize, yeah. okay, these are the things that are bringing, you know, these are the, this is the 20% that is bringing 80% in. Uh -huh. And it was so, uh, how do you say this? Freeing because it was like, I actually don't need to keep on doing this. Like, <laughs> the answer was like right in front of me. Yes, <laughs> and also it's like, it was for me like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore, you know? Like, and yeah, it was really like a weight out of, like down yeah. my shoulders that it was like, you know, this thing that I'm doing that mm -hmm. involves traveling or involves like spending time away from family or, you know, like, mm -hmm. or, involves sleeping less or whatever it's yes. like i don't really need it like if i continue doing that and i do it a little bit more mm -hmm. if i continue doing this 20 and i do it a little bit more then i could 
I could have more time for myself, mm -hmm. uh, more time with family, mm -hmm. le work less and have yeah. the same or more impact, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just took a tangent there, <laughs> but I think... No, but that was like coming back, like, yeah. was that one of the, 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 uh, the things that made you take this uh, shift in the, in, the, in the beginning of the pandemic? Mm. Like, because I remember that before the pandemic, we had, I think, like quite a different, um, I don't know if like workflow, it's, it's kind of still, of course, the same workflow, but we had a different attention. Like our attention mm. as a studio was like put more maybe in the client work or yeah, like personal projects of the studio, like creating type typefaces and so on. Yeah. And now we do, we still do, do the, those things, but uh, we shifted our attention attention to uh, more like online teaching. Mm. And, and yes, was like, was that, that those books that you read in the beginning of the pandemic, like they, did they help you to take this decision, like uh, to shift the attention of the studio? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that I, I'm in those books, those books made clear to me that I should close the shop mm -hmm. because mm. it was just taking um, a lot of time mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't also my genius zone. Mm -hmm. I felt that it wasn't my the thing that brought me joy the mm -hmm. most and um, it was just bringing too much complexity to the business yeah. um, without necessarily having a yeah, a financial yeah, yeah. Uh, um, retribution. Yeah. Um, so that was clear to me. Like, okay, I, I'm gonna close the shop, and I, I don't get me wrong. Yeah, I love the products. I love the products. <laughs> I love the products that we made. We made beautiful stuff in this, and we have a lot of stock of that stuff, yeah. and we continue using that to uh, to send to our podcast guests and to our students. students yeah. um, so I'm really proud of the work we did with that shop mm -hmm. and in another uh, coffee break mm -hmm. we can also um, discuss like what starting that shop brought to the studio because mm -hmm. it was a huge massive growth whatever but besides that that was um, clear to me like mm -hmm. I, I want to close the shop and what was also um, something I realized in that analysis that I did in the beginning of the pandemic mm -hmm in terms of my income streams is that the one of the things that had been my uh, or has been my side project for many years which is teaching and running workshops and mm -hmm. the seminars we used to run in the studio which was it always worked more or less like a, a side, side project it wasn't our main focus our main focus was client work and we would do workshops from time to time and it was like okay we organize the workshop and we forget about it people sign up Mm -hmm. They come, we do the workshop, and it was just, I would say that we were busy with that perhaps in total 10 mm -hmm. days per year. Yeah. And, and I realized by doing this analysis in the beginning of the pandemic that it was like, hey, wait, these 10 days bring a lot of uh, revenue. Bring 30% of our revenue. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and it's just 10 days per year. What would happen if we do this a lot more? Yeah. And also like, I remember that the seminars we run in the studio mm -hmm. were like the highlight of my year. Yeah. It was so fun. It was so, we got so much back. Yeah. You know, I felt that I was impacting the life of those 10 students that would come to that seminar because we were running in-person seminars and it was just 10 students per, per year that could attend that seminar. And I can say that we, we really, they would never forget that experience. Yeah. I can for sure say that they would never forget those three days that they would spend with us in this yeah. seminar. And, and also I would never forget them as well. Like, yeah. and, I got so much joy from that, and this is also the 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 time where you started teaching. Mm -hmm. um, oh my god, we have so many anecdotes. <laughs> the first time, whatever. Like yeah. we we'll, we'll talk about this in another coffee break, but um, but yeah, it was bringing so much joy, and yeah. So so it was not only about the financial retribution. Totally. it was also like about the uh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, yes. I mean, it was it was both. It was mm -hmm. like, hey, if I would do this more. I would be more happy. Mm -hmm. I would make more revenue for the studio mm -hmm. 
and I would probably have more time, which yeah. is like what in the situation we are right now. Like, yeah. um, if you look at how I was working when you just came in the studio mm -hmm. and how much I work right now, it's like a big difference, yes. you know, like, and, mm -hmm. and I never thought I would be in the, that position where I can say like, okay, I work from home today or today I take a break or I go mm -hmm. to sports. Like I would never, yeah. I would have never done this three years, three ago. years back, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I think that that was a, a, a also an easy decision. It's like mm -hmm. a, I love teaching people seem to learn from me. Mm -hmm. uh, I seem to inspire them. We uh, we are successful in that. Yeah. Let's double down on this. Yeah. And I think as we started doing that more and open the possibilities to for other people to join our courses and our workshops and stuff from anywhere they were in any place they were in the world, yeah. uh, because it was online and not not just um, in person like we yeah. used to do it. Also, we, we used the excuse of the pandemic to to. To totally like embrace that format right like it was, but it, yeah. it's so it's so interesting because yeah. you remember that as before the pandemic started yeah we were already planning on uh on starting an online platform ourselves yeah. and mm -hmm. we actually had recorded some courses but as i said since it was a side project it wasn't something that we were like really working on intensively mm -hmm. it was like okay we record the lessons and then at some point we we're gonna lessons, launch yeah. this project mm -hmm. and yeah so that that was um that was a result and that's mm -hmm. why nowadays we are um we have doubled down on that because mm -hmm. it it really works in all aspects yeah you know it, like teaching students and 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 mentoring like coaching students mm -hmm. is so rewarding as yes. well and i feel that this this um we get a lot of a lot back yes. and i think that kind of feedback is what keeps us going you know yes, like uh, yes yes, yes. Uh, so yeah yeah i hope i answer your question yes <laughs> yeah what was the initial question of this conversation <laughs> So yeah, I, like focusing on different income yeah. streams and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So let's go to the takeaways. takeaways yes. Yeah. I actually have memorized some of them. I was like yeah. thinking in my mind, put it in the back of my head for if hopefully I will get them right. Uh, I will, you, you tell me if you agree with this. Like, yeah. first of all, we started like talking about the importance of diversifying income streams mm. uh, and how that like going through that in the beginning of your career allow you later on to sort of like uh, being able to analyze all together and sort of like pick the ones that really contributed for uh, to the studio for the, for the best, right? Like, mm. um, so diversifying income streams first, simplifying was another mm. I think like key moment on this. Like, uh, uh, yes, to not get overwhelmed with this uh, income streams because like they can get overwhelming. Mm. Like they can be like too much, and and that touches on something that actually has relation with our last. Uh, a conversation takeaway that it mm. was letting go mm. like like back then we were like, like talking about uh, oh, yeah. uh, about uh, delegating tasks and letting go of like the workload that you have as an employer but now i think like we can like um recycle that term of letting go to to let go of uh, income streams mm, totally like the fact that you had to close the the shop of the of or the, the online shop to be able to uh, focus more on the on the online teaching side like i think like uh, thank like thanks to that thanks that, that that you that you did let go of that online mm. shop and some like and also like um, started to draw the attention from other uh, side of the studio we were able to focus more time and energy into this uh, new project that is like bringing so much uh, first financial retribution also joy and also the the, the impact on, on on the students right absolutely um, so yeah for me this is like the three takeaways I don't know I you, love those takeaways yeah. and I would like to add to this letting go that I think that's that's the hardest part of all because yeah. it's like uh, 
you you need to let it's very hard to let go when there's something you invested so much time in so for mm -hmm. instance with the products and the the shop mm -hmm. we had invested so much time mm -hmm. so much love some of the products that i did for this shop are some of my favorite things i ever done in my life yeah. in as a creative and you have to you know in order to let go you had to let go of the fact that you invested so much so much time in that mm -hmm. because uh, if you let that inform um, inform your decision, um, you will continue investing time on something that is not worth it. Yeah. And yeah, it is important to realize like, okay, I need to stop now. Um, I need to stop now versus continue investing in this project that is not bringing in yeah much joy much income well, yeah and, and it's taking up a lot of my time yes. you know and it's like yeah it's like the price you need to pay It's you know it's like the price you need to pay for letting go and i'm happy that yeah. i pay that price well, in that you moment let go expecting to like uh have some better things back right like, totally yeah totally and another thing i want to add mm -hmm. to one of your takeaways which was the the first one that mm -hmm. is like you know, diversifying. Um, I think diversifying is, you know, for those that are listening, that are creatives or are just studying, I think that if you, if there's something important in diversifying or creating income streams is, um, is because you, you need to experience what are your great at, what are you great at? You need to discover that for yourself. You need to experience you know, with your skills, what are the things in which you can have most of the impact? Mm -hmm. And this is not necessarily working for clients. Perhaps it is for you, but it may not be. And I know that many of us are very attached to the idea of like, if I go freelance, I will start working with clients and um, I will have to find clients. And, you know, the, the word client is very present for us. And I think that thinking of in a more entrepreneurial way about your craft and about your business is it can only be positive for you because it may be that your genius zone is not necessarily working for clients but it's just teaching other people mm -hmm. or creating products and having an online shop or writing books or whatever mm -hmm. you know you you need to use you know i feel that a, a, running a business is a perfect place to discover more about yourself and what you're great at and this is where income streams play a big role yeah um so yeah thank you so beautiful. much for this conversation <laughs> thank you so much everyone for listening these are our coffee breaks um if you loved it this podcast you can listen to all of our other coffee breaks and um, podcast episodes on martinaflor.com slash podcast if you want to watch this episode, you can watch it on YouTube. Just go to martinaflora.com slash, slash YouTube to watch them. Uh, you can also listen to this podcast on all podcast platforms out there. If you love this episode, leave us a review, subscribe to this podcast. And if you want to send us a comment or question, just write an email to podcast at martinaflora.com. Thank you so much for listening and see you on the next episode of our Coffee Breaks. Bye-bye. Ciao.